Welcome back to Modern Homestead Alaska. Won't you join me for a freezer clean out video today? While filming this, my neighbor got her moose call and I dropped everything to go and help her process her moose. If you would like to skip ahead to us processing a moose, feel free, go right ahead. It'll be towards the second half of the video. Welcome to Modern Homestead Alaska. We are Erin and Jessica Milnes. We are building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska with the help of three of our children. Our second son, Caleb, our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt, along with our three dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and the newest addition, Roberto. Part of what I have been working on each day is just accomplishing a task. And today's task amongst I am painting and redoing the rooms that we're in and getting everything touched up and deep cleaned and organized. My task for today though, is to actually get these freezers working the way that I always imagined them. Those of you that have been part of the channel for a while know that I have deep freezers in our basement. I have been fortunate enough over the last year. I have that stand up freezer now that's fruits and vegetables that we got from Costco. I have a freezer that is dedicated to the wild caught Alaskan fish, whether that is salmon or cod or halibut or as of recently, um, pike and so on. And it is a fish freezer. And then I have a freezer that is dedicated to the chickens that we raised here on our homestead. And in that freezer, there is also overflow like pork butts, those sort of things. Then I have a giant deep freeze that's a big chest freezer that holds the whole gamut of everything else. And then I have this upstairs freezer. This thing is packed to the brim. The idea that I want to live with is our massive, like long-term pantry that's in the basement I want to start shopping from there. So the idea is that I will make a list of this is what we're going to eat this week. I will go to the freezers in the basement. I'll shop those deep freezers and put in this upstairs freezer, the food that we need for that week. And the hope is that this becomes organized and that we're not constantly running downstairs like last night i needed a vegetable someone ran to the basement to get a vegetable and so on then we will get to my pantry that's upstairs it's the last of kind of the food related projects that i'm going to work on before we plant our garden this spring and as far as like cleaning and organizing goes, we can do some canning and some other stuff before we plant the garden. But let's have a look at what a disaster this freezer is and um, get it completely cleaned out and then take our stuff, go to the basement, organize the big, big deep freeze and then start using this one as this is what we're doing this week. So I'm just going to pull up a chair. I have a trash can here and then I have a cooler that I can carry everything down with and a marker. Because if there's any meats or things in here that maybe I, I know that there's some stuff in here that goes to dog food, I need to start thawing that out and cooking that up and giving it to the dogs. Our dogs are not on a raw food diet. So this is our recent hike. But Erin did this. Yeah, I just pulled the pike out of right there. You literally, there's no extra space. Oh goodness, okay. These are amazing. They were like, smoothie packs from Costco and then my Costco doesn't sell them. But I do a lot of breakfast smoothies. Um, I 
really probably should just put this on time lapse. But what I'm doing is separating everything that is in this freezer into three sections. And as you can see, here is an apple pie filling I made a while ago and have never gotten to packaging it properly. So I'll get to that, I'll do that. But I'm making three separate sections. Something that would go down to one of the deep freezes in the basement, things I want to keep in this freezer and things that are used for animal feed. So the chickens and the dogs. All right, here we go, <laughs> much faster. Let's just get it separated and cleaned out. That one thing I don't mention is that is the open yeast and then I keep some additional yeast in our deep freeze. I had to vacuum a bunch of peas and get it scrubbed and ready to get going. I have these two little containers that go in here that I'm not using for anything else. They didn't work in my pantry and I thought they would help me organize some of the, the open fruits and vegetables that are upstairs for like smoothies or those sort of things. And then this is just kind of, I thought I would keep up here maybe some stuff that I just keep upstairs on hand. I did go ahead and get out the food saver right here. I have two different space bags. This little bag. So these are rose hips that we harvested. I use them for like medicinal reasons. We um, put them in our elderberry syrup, so on. So I thought I would go ahead and just <laughs> seal up anything that I can. This is what's left of our Lobish cranberries. We made cranberry sauce out of this. We did a bunch, but I like to save some of these Alaska wild low bush cranberries that we harvested out of our yard. And I also put that in our elderberry. Ooh, the paintbrushes are attacking it. Um, I put that in our elderberry syrup for medicinal reasons as well. Okay, so we're just working on some sealing things. So see how this ham is, it's starting to get kind of frostbite. It's from 522. I think it's still good, but I would like to use it this week. The other thing is these giant Costco bags of vegetables. They save me a ton of money. However, they are a mess after you open them. So I thought I would try a couple of different sizes. Let's see. Oh, the next one only just a little bit bigger. And there. Here. But I thought I should start doing this. I've sealed up uh, another chunk of ham. This is some of Caleb's duck. We have all the ducks saved. One day we're gonna make duck burgers, grind all of it in the meat grinder. Mm, they were so good. You can make like sausage and stuff out of them. 
but it takes a lot of ducks. So we just kept freezing, freezing, freezing. And then Caleb makes like jalapeno poppers out of his ducks, which are also amazing. But I'll finish getting this going and then we'll move on to the next part. All right, let's put this back together and then we'll take everything down to the basement. Okay, so fruits here, vegetables here, bread items there, and then we just have like some bacon, some hot dogs, and then the pork. Now, I have a couple of things that need to get ate. This is one breakfast burrito, and then two packages of pre-cooked breakfast sausage for Aaron in the morning. That needs to get eight, so it'll go in here. All this random ham, I put a whole chunk of ham to go into the deep freeze, but this random ham, I'm going to just chop it up. We've been kind of saving some eggs and stuff, and I wanna do a bunch of like breakfast burritos or whatever. So I wanna keep that up here handy. And then I totally forgot that I had these. This is why organization is important. And we need some jalapeno salt. So this week I would like to take these jalapenos, dehydrate them and make some more jalapeno salt. Everything I set in this cooler over here. I'll show you as I put it in. These are those bags of salmon where we just scrape and clean the salmon and it becomes chicken food. So everything over on this side is gonna be animal related. And then like this is something I cooked up for the dogs. And then what happened is like, this is some freezer burnt cod need to cook that up or give it to the chickens. We obviously don't want to make anything sick. This is some salmon. This is, none of this is ours. Um, friends had like the fish for it and then didn't seal it. And so it's old and it's frostbit, but it is still good for the animals. And that's something you come across quite a bit here in Alaska. Someone will give you like a bunch of free meat for your animals. That's a carcass. See, like weird saran wrap. So I need to start going through that for the chickens. And then this was someone's old caribou. And so that just needs to be defrosted and fried up for the dog. So I'll leave one out and start on that. This is literally an entire salmon without its head. Same song and dance. That needs to go and be used as animal food. So I'm literally gonna defrost this, this will go to the chickens tomorrow morning when I feed them. And then whenever this caribou is defrosted, I'll fry it up and we'll divide it out over the week for the dogs. Well, <laughs> as luck would have it, I have to now go get this freezer done. So I just I cleaned up the kitchen really quick and the best we made there so that, um, once we get done, I have both of the coolers on the porch. It is five degrees outside. It is colder outside than it is in a deep freeze. So the food is gonna be fine until Wyatt can help me carry it down there, but I have to go clean it out. My neighbor got her moose call. Her dad helped her pick it up. And as soon as I get Wyatt from school, I told her I would head over there, bring my sealer, and I'm going to help her process her moose this afternoon, and then in exchange, she's gonna give me as many bones as I want, so I'll need a freezer to put them in, and I can do a huge moose bone broth project. So that's very, very exciting for her. I'm very excited for her and her family, but I've got to go help her husband's out of town, so us girls are gonna tackle a moose. So let's head to the basement. We are in a hurry now. 
All right, so we did this recently together. So that's all fruits and vegetables. So see, we've already made a bunch. So lots of bags have been taken out of here. But I do think <laughs> uh, lowering the sizes of those, good idea. Let's take a look in the chicken freezer. Okay, so underneath this chicken, these we found, they've had forever. This is some pre-cooked hamburger and then some freezer meals. So let me touch this freezer really quick. Okay, so the hamburger, I'm just gonna throw in a cooler here. Anything I don't want in this freezer. I don't mind necessarily that there's a bunch of popsicles in here. I do this week, I still have four Costco chickens left. Um, I do really want to get those. We'll see how far we make it with the bone broth candy, but I would like to see that those chickens. I do just go through all the freezers. These are tips and tricks of things that I use to kind of get myself reorganized. I am a big believer if you organize it right in the very, very beginning, like when we set up this freezer, that when it gets unorganized, it's just kind of at the surface level. So if I will just tackle the surface again and again, and again, then we quickly and easily put the freezers right back to where we needed them. So I do go ahead and keep some freezer meals in here. I have the chickens in there. We now have popsicles in there, but like I said earlier, waste not, want not, leave them for Aaron and the kids. All right, let's jump to what's supposed to be the fish freezer. The fish freezer is much easier and we've been eating quite a bit of fish here lately. I do keep a couple of freezer meals in here as well, but all I do is just go through and make sure that the kids hadn't crammed too much in here that didn't belong. I found like a pork loin doesn't belong in there and so on and then we can just move on. Okay, the big beef freeze. I think freezers in general, I don't know if it matters who you are. Maybe there's an organization style out there that you keep this perfectly tidy deep freeze. But for me, the way that my brain works, and a deep freeze is actually out of sight, out of mind. So I'll stick things in there, and unless I intentionally go back and remind myself what's in there, have list, those sort of things, I forget what's in the freezer. I'm not looking at it. It's not right in front of me. I do, however, am logical enough that I remember like, oh, I need to go get some hamburger or something like that. I know what's in there, but I don't really pay attention. So I take avocado and just smash it with a little bit of lemon juice when they're ripe and I'm not going to get to them. And then we just have some frozen avocado. All this should go with the fruits and vegetables. Okay, so what I was saying is we're going to make a list of the projects that we need to get to. And by writing it down, I have it kind of in that forefront of my brain. So right now we have the jalapeno salt. The Costco chickens and then the tomatoes and then a couple of things our cheese fridge I just emptied that freezer as well that stuff will come down here it really was just more of the duck breast because they got a couple of ducks each time and then we save those so on well I'm going to take all of the frozen cheese that was in here and move that upstairs so down here in the bottom, 
This is where I just keep all of my nuts and I don't have any additional nuts that need to go in here. So the next tote goes, I have all the tomatoes. Awesome, hang on. Always something unfortunate, right? kind of proud of is I haven't really found any way. So the tomatoes are now over here. I have a huge brisket. This, so let's decide. Okay, so bacon, sausage, and ham. doing lots of like items with like items so anything that's bread related goes together anything that is pork or say sausage or pork loin I like to keep all of those near each other and then anything I'm going to grab more frequently should be at the top and anything like the milks you see in the bottom that are kept there more or less for emergencies and then I kind of rotate through them. I'll take a couple of those gallons out and put some new gallons in. We now have so much space. Like back behind there, we could do a bunch of bones. Down alongside of here, we could do, and I have here that I'll just lay on top. I started, so this is Aaron's chili. And he does a Whole30 chili, and because we're going to do another round of Whole30, I started freezing a couple of Whole30 meals. So this is the sausage with the peppers and onions we made. So that's a good meal. All of our beef is here. All of our like sweets, like cookies and pies and stuff like that. All of our sausage and bacon. These are pizza crust. And then this is some of the already cooked pork butt. And then what is this one? The honey pulled pork. So on. This is a blank steak. And now with all this extra space, like literally there's space underneath here, here all along the sides and back behind. We should be able to get plenty of the bones in here and what is upstairs. So, all right, let's go process the moose. In just a second, we are gonna jump in and we are immediately processing the moose. Before you go, if that's not something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can go ahead and pause the video in order to do that. However, in just a second, if you do not want to see a moose being processed, you need to go ahead and click off this video. No hard feelings. Three, two, one. From here on out, the video is going to be processing this moose. I appreciate anyone that was stay tuned for the organization of the freezer videos. But I want to talk to you a little bit of how my neighbor got this moose and kind of what is going on and why we're doing what we're doing. 
first and foremost, I'm a guest in her house. I am here to help. Her husband is out of town and you get that moose call. You have to jump and run. And so she needed the help and let's get it just tackled as a team. That's the Alaskan way. The other thing is we process this moose how she wants it processed, not necessarily how everyone's gonna do it, everything you see online or how you would personally want the moose processed. None of that matters in my opinion here because it's her moose, it's her family, and we're gonna process it how she wants it processed. I'll also touch a little bit of what the program is in just a second of how and why she got this moose. Did you do both front quarters are done? Yeah. All right, so we just finished the second front quarter. She already tackled one of them by herself. And now they're gonna bring up the hind quarter and it's gonna take up this whole table. So it's a little female, but like a young one, right? That's what yeah, your dad like said. Last year's. Yeah, like little bitty female. These are the two hindquarters that we're gonna get started on and tackle, and then we'll move on to grinding and packaging and so on. So all we're trying to do is just find the connective tissue like this and chunk it apart. I've never butchered one of these before myself. And normally what? Your husband does it, right? Uh, he does all the dirty work. Yeah. So our best guess is whatever's held together by the gray is um, a different cut. Speak the Okay, this creepy little form. So I had a couple of thoughts. First of all, I think the bearded butchers might be a little bit proud of us. Uh, neither one of us had actually done this part on any animal ourselves before. Normally her husband kind of chunks it up for her and then gives it to her and she uh, does the packaging and the smaller cuts into whatever it is that she wants. So a little bit about the program when a moose is hit, like a roadkill moose is hit, then someone is allowed to go and pick up that moose and it keeps it from being wasted. 
One of the things though is you have to take the entire mousse and you have to use as much of the mousse as possible. I was shocked at the amount of people that she knows and how every single piece of this mousse went somewhere to someone and uh, most of it is kept and processed by us for the freezer. But we're literally talking the heart, the tongue, the spine. I took the, the femur bones home. Um, anything that is in like the five gallon bucket of scrap or waste from where the animal had been hit, that meat is not good for human consumption. That is kept to the side. She will either cook it up for her own dog or it is given to one of the dog sled teams at the church. So there is like literally no waste from this animal. We even here in a few minutes had a friend that is an Alaska native and she was just making sure and double checking that all of the bones, everything was being used. Just knowing that this is such a blessing Given beef prices right now, if you go to buy a $30 or $40 package of meat, this has just saved her family so much money and it is the highest, best quality meat that she could possibly feed them. So this was such a young female, it would have taken us 10 times the amount of time it took if it was like a full grown moose. But what happened was her and I were able to do three of the quarters in about two and a half hours processed and broke those down. But this is after her dad had already quartered it, um, done all of the work to get it to where it's at the table where we could process it. And then she has this giant commercial um, meat grinder, which we were able, without a single hiccup in the road, without pre-freezing and having to worry about the motor or anything else, we were able to just start grinding what was left for hamburger. So the way in which she likes her mousse is she takes as many big roasts as possible off of it. And when she defrosts those, she decides, does she want to make a roast? Does she want to make it into steaks or whatever? And then everything else is turned into hamburger. And hamburger is one of the main staples in her home. She had mentioned this is maybe moose number 19 over their lifetime here in Alaska that they have processed and they have just realized they don't do the whole make it into sausage or make it into jerky or any of that. They just know the way in which their family chooses to eat the moose and that is big roast, steak cuts, and hamburger. If she decides she wants sausage one morning, she will thaw out some of the hamburger, add some sausage seasoning to it, let it uh, marinate in that for a little bit, and then make sausage from there. But she doesn't pre-make any of that. The other thing that she does that uh, was not something kind of Erin and I expected, she doesn't pre-add the fat. Moose has no fat, so when you cook it, you have to add fat. Well, she likes to make that choice for herself when she is cooking the moose. And so I felt like I learned quite a bit from her and the other ladies that came to help us turn it into hamburger. We're using both my sealer and her sealer, which cut the time down into about half because we were talking 45 seconds to a minute for each bag to seal. If you can run both of those at the same time, that is so much better. And we literally just knocked this out. It was exhausting, I'm not gonna lie, but we got that whole mousse processed and ready for her freezer. It took her about 12 hours. I probably gave her four or five hours of my time and we could not be happier with the results.
I'm gonna go ahead and close out the video. So if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. When you ring the bell, you'll get notifications. Thumbs up and comments help our channel to grow. I appreciated you being here today and I will share more with you in upcoming videos.